Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, I'm going to be pacing back and forth because I, I, once again, I'll remind you guys, my tripod has broken, so we're making it do what it do with what, what we got. But listen, all right, last night we got an upset in the heavyweight division, if you didn't know. Robert Hellanius came out here. He folded up Adam Kanaki, got, a, got the signature win of his career, handed Adam Kanaki his first loss of his career. And honestly, I'll, I'll say it like this. He exposed Adam Kanaki as the hype job and the protected fraud that he was. And I know you guys are saying, man, BT, you really popping off at the lip a lot these days. Yes, I am, because last year, you know, we had Adam Kanaki as one of the many PBC fighters in witness protection that was offered the Anthony Joshua fight. He could have take, taken it with, with six weeks to train, and this dude talked about, oh, what am I, a call girl? Am I a prostitute? So, it was, you know... From that moment on, I never liked him. I never liked him. And PBC, Al Heyman, all parties involved have been doing their best to put this guy in witness protection. You know, they, they, they've been recycling ex-Deontay Wilder and Gerald Washington opponents like Robert Hellanius and uh, Gerald Washington himself, I believe. Uh, he fought Charles Martin. So, and Chris Ariola as well. So, it's not like Adam Kanaki was fighting the best fighters or fighting the creme de la creme of the division to where you can say, you know what, okay, this guy, maybe I didn't like him, maybe I don't like how he handled the Joshua situation, but he's he's he he's he's good. He's as good as advertised. He's not he was he was never as good as advertised. And I always thought at on his best day, Adam Kanaki was a solid, you know, lower B level fighter, you know, maybe, you know, maybe, maybe on, on his best day. So on his you know, his regular days, I think he's a C class fighter. He's a bona fide C class fighter. And he proved it on the night when he fought a guy, Robert Hellanius, who in his last big fight, the last fight Robert Hellanius had that mattered, he fought Gerald Washington and he got folded up by Gerald Washington. Yes, that Gerald Washington, the same one that fought uh, Charles Martin just recently and got schooled by Charles Martin. So, you know, this was supposed to be a layup for Kanaki fighting Robert Hellanius. And the first real punches that Hellanius lands on him hurt him. Okay, they hurt him. And he he got folded up by, by, by the um, by the Nordic warrior from Finland. So fin Finland, everybody in Finland, Helsinki, stand up. Finland, stand up. You got you got yourself a guy that's now a player in the division and heavyweight in Robert Hellanius. But we 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 make this video to talk about Adam Kanaki because last year he had a chance to to take life changing money, money he will never ever 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 see again in boxing. And for the chance of a lifetime to fight Anthony Joshua for the Unified Heavyweight Championship of the World at the Madison Square Garden. And he turned it down. And he got his ass folded up by Robert Hellenius. So I'm happy that it happened. I'm happy that, you know, this guy who PBC, you know, in the American boxing establishment was trying to shove down our throats as some sort of legit top-level contender. Um now got put in this place by Robert Hellanius. And, and that makes it even sweeter. He didn't lose to an upper echelon guy like we all thought he would when he stepped up. He lost to a guy in Hellanius who, at one point in time, you know, he was a promising prospect. You know, he beat the likes of Derek Chisora. He's beaten Eric and Temper. He, you know, he's a solid guy. He's not a, a bum or anything like that. We know, he, we know he comes to fight, but we know that he's seen better days. And this was a layup for Adam Kanaki. If he, if he would have won this fight, we're talking about him being in a great position, maybe being a one fight away or getting a world title shot next, but now that he lost, he's got to rebuild, and it's it's just sweet, sweet victory. So now that's, you know, it's March right now. We're not even in the middle of March, so literally from Mar from December 4th to now, from December 4th to March 8th, as I'm shooting this video, three, three, very, three very important fighters in the PBC heavyweight stable lost. Ruiz lost the Joshua rematch. Wilder got destroyed and embarrassed and humiliated by Fury. And Adam Kaunaki got killed by Robert freaking Hellanius. So now the question we got to ask ourselves is: Is PBC in trouble? And I, I, you know, I've been, I've been, you know, I've been saying it like I said it after the Fury fight, and I'm saying it again today. And a lot of people on social media are upset with me. You know, I got, I get some boxing writers and people in boxing saying, "Oh well, BT, you, know, you can't say that because you don't speak to Al Heyman, you don't speak to Sam Watson, and I do, and all these things." And, and, and other people are saying, "Well, you can't say that. You're just hating on PBC. You're an Al Heyman hater." And, and the fact of the matter is, I'm not an Al Heyman hater. I just call a spade a spade. And if it sounds like hate to you, if the truth sounds like hate to you, then I, I whatever, whatever you think, we'll go with that. But. We all know that the heavyweight division is the, ultimately the division that runs boxing. 
if you control the heavyweight division, you control boxing because the heavyweight division is the glamour, is the glamour division in boxing. It's the, it's the division in boxing that's generating the most money and the most interest amongst not just hardcore fans, but more importantly, the casual fans as well. The people that don't, don't normally tune into boxing will tune in for a big, great heavyweight fight. No, 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 there's nothing in boxing like a big uh, heavyweight fight. And you know, Al Heyman had three guys that were in the running to really push uh, PBC forward, and they've all got their ass taxed. All of them have. And in the case of Wilder and Kaunaki, both of them have got their ass whooped by guys that at some point in their careers worked with Emmanuel Stewart in uh, Tyson Fury and Robert Hellenius. So listen, Kronk Jim is alive. The spirit of Emmanuel Stewart is alive. R.I.P. Manny Stewart. Kronk Jim, stand up. Detroit, stand up. Adam Kaunaki, you C-class fighter. You should have taken the Joshua fight. Straight up. You should have taken the Joshua fight talking about I'm a prostitute. Well, listen, hey, you would have been a very well-paid prostitute if you would have fought if you would have fought um, Anthony Joshua last year. I mean, you would have lost and you would have absolutely got folded up because, listen, anybody who knows this boxing thing knows that, 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 um, that your defense was incredibly leaky, that the best attribute you had going for you was your punch output, your high punch output, your work rate. So because of these reasons, um, because of your vulnerabilities and because of your style, I think you'll still be entertaining fights. You got great support from the Polish fans. You know they can put you in there with a Chris, with a, with an Andy Ruiz, or a Wilder, and it'll do great numbers. And I'm sure it'll be entertaining. But as far as Adam Kanaki ever being a creme de la creme, top tier, up echelon heavyweight, you can mwah, kiss that goodbye because it's not happening. So. Um, I'm happy, and I'm. You know what? A lot of you guys said a lot. I, I saw a lot of posts on social media today from boxing fans saying, "Oh, well, we need to keep that same energy for Adam Kanaki." So we're, we're keeping that. We're keeping the same energy from Adam, for Adam Kanaki as we were for Deontay Wilder because I am what you would call an equal opportunity asshole. He got exposed as the protected hype job fraud that he was, and I'm happy about it because, you know, he's talking about what am I a prostitute when you could have fought for the unified heavyweight championship of the world, all to just get folded up by Robert freaking Hellenius who we all know is, in the, is in, the, in the twilight of his career. So Al Heyman, PBC, you guys are in big, big trouble. You know, and I think, I think I wouldn't be surprised in the near future if a lot of fighters are leaving Al Heyman because he, he's giving these guys horrible advice. He's giving all these guys horrible advice. You know, Lewis Ortiz ducked the Joshua fight, gave him horrible advice. Uh, Adam Kanaki ducked the Joshua fight, gave him horrible advice. Wilder had a chance to fight for 100, uh, 100 million undisputed in another to, to, to fight. Al Heyman and his team gave him horrible advice. So we're seeing a pattern here. We're seeing a pattern that if all these guys that turned down the Anthony Joshua fight last year on June the 1st, with the exception of Andy Ruiz, have all gotten their ass whooped in one way or the other since they turned it down. So it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's awesome. It's awesome and it's so amazing to see as a, as a boxing fan. You know, because these guys, I mean, a lot of these guys didn't want no smoke, you know, um... So we're going to see how everything progresses here on True School Sports. We're going to see how everything progresses in the heavyweight division. You know, who does PBC have now to, to, try, to, to try to do anything? Because it's not Wilder. We know Wilder's not going to be Fury in the rematch. That, 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 that's, that's not happening. There's no way in hell he's beating Fury in the third fight. He's, he's done. He's, he's done. He's, mentally, he's not the same. Kaunaki was never going to be anybody to begin with. And now he's really not going to be anybody to begin with because he, he just don't have, he don't have the skills nor the heart to do it. And then, um, who else we got? Uh, and then Andy Ruiz. You know what? Andy Ruiz, I think, could still be a good fighter. I think he could still... I think he would give a lot of guys problems because he's an incredibly talented heavyweight. He's got great hand speed. It's just a matter of can he be disciplined? Can he be dedicated enough to the game? D -d -d the jury's still out on that. So I'm not going to shit on Ruiz. A Wilder Kanaki? Finished. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Big shout out goes to Robert Hellenius on the signature win of his career and upsetting the apple cart as a 5 to 1 underdog in hostile territory at the Barclays Center in front of all the loyal and rabid Polskas that were there to support Adam Kanaki. So let me know what you guys think about this entire fight. Let me know what you think about PBC in the heavyweight division. Let me know what you think about Adam Kanaki. Can he come back? Can he? Can he even become a top five? Forget, forget heavyweight title. Forget being a heavyweight champion. Can Adam Kalnaki even become a top five contender in the heavyweight division? You know, can he ever do that? Let, let, let me know in the comments down below. This guy, you know, a far cry from the days of Adam um, of Andrew Golada, who was a who was a fantastic heavyweight. You know, a real legit top level heavyweight who, you know, beat himself. But he this, this ain't Andrew Golada. So leave your comments down below. Take the time to subscribe. Like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, take care, guys.